the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. Ave Maria. You know, we have in the prayers and the, the litanies of the church, um, title after title after title of our Blessed Lady, describing her virtues, describing her glory, describing her closeness to God, describing her place in the history of salvation. Queen of Prophets, pray for us. Queen of Apostles, pray for us. And of course, we have our own favorite titles. We might have a statue at home of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We might have a picture of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor. And all these titles are known to us and loved by us because they describe the woman we know, the woman who we love. But today, let's look at some of the more obscure titles. One of the more obscure titles of Our Lady. In the litany of Our Lady of Loretto, which we pray quite traditionally, we pray to Our Lady as Mother, we pray to Our Lady as Virgin, and at the end we pray to Our Lady as Queen. But in the middle, we have some hidden titles, some obscure titles of Our Lady. Mirror of Justice, Seat of Wisdom, Cause of Our Joy, what do these mean? Where have these come from? Tower of David, Tower of Ivory, House of Gold. What do these titles mean? Today we're going to look particularly at the title of Our Lady, Mirror of Justice. Speculum Justitiae, Mirror of Justice, pray for us. Now, we all know mirrors. We all have a mirror. A mirror reflects something, that's the definition of a mirror. You know, in the old times, before they'd learned to put metal behind glass, they had a highly polished um, brass or silver. That people would look at themselves. The earliest mirror that's recorded is the still pool into which Narcissus fell in love. We all know what a mirror is. And we know, obviously, that our blessed lady, our lady, reflects the glory of God. She reflects down to us the beauty and the truth and the goodness of God. So the beauty we see on Our Lady is a reflection of the beauty of God. The goodness we see on Our Lady is the reflection of the goodness of God. The truth we see in Our Lady is a reflection of the truth of God. Our Lady is the mirror of justice. In fact, this title of Our Lady comes from the Book of Wisdom in the Old Testament. Um, for she is a reflection of eternal light. She is a reflection of eternal light, the spotless mirror, the working of God, and an image of his goodness. You know, when we paint a picture, we've made an image. When we take a photograph, we've made an image. And a mirror, a mirror image, a mirror reflection, is a temporary moving image. Our Lady is a moving, breathing image of the beauty and the truth and the goodness of God working. Our Blessed Lady reflects down from heaven the glory of God. But Our Lady also reflects up from earth to heaven all the goodness of humanity, all the best in humanity, all the best in the human being who struggles to do the will of God, all the best in the human being who changes themselves to fit in with God's way. She reflects back to God from earth to heaven, all of humanity trying to grow in grace. We say in the prayers of the church, you are the highest honor of our race. We say this to Our Lady. She is the highest thing that reflects back the best of humanity. She is the best human being that ever was. She reflects from us, from earth to heaven, the best that there is. All the beauty, all the truth, 
all the goodness that is on earth is reflected and offered back to God. Now, now we see through a mirror dimly, but later face to face, St. Paul says. At the moment, we, because we're imperfect, see dimly, but later we will see face to face, later being heaven. St. Paul is talking about how at the moment we have dim understanding through a mirror dimly, but later we will see face to face. A mirror is only as effective as it is clean, yeah? You can have all the mirrors you like, you can have all the eyeglasses you like, you can have all the windows in your house that you like, but if they're dirty, if they're unclean, if they're spotted, then they're completely useless. The dirty mirror will not reflect, the glasses that haven't been cleaned you won't see through, the mirrors, the windows that you haven't cleaned might as well be walls. Our Lady, however, immaculately conceived, immaculately living, pure and unsullied, kept free from original sin and kept free by her own will from actual sin, is the perfect mirror. The perfect mirror with which to see the glory of God. Each saint shows forth the glory of God. All the saints show forth the glory of God in some way, some particular aspect of the glory of God. But even the greatest saints had slight imperfections. Maybe this one tended towards a little bit of anger. This one had to um, tighten their mouth a bit. They went to confession. Even for their small faults, the saints even the greatest saints went to confession. We still see the glory of God shining in them, but not as much as we see in our Blessed Lady, who was perfect, who had no faults, who had no need for confession. We see, unlike with the other saints, our Blessed Lady reflects purely and completely the glory of God. This is why Our Lady is called the Mirror of Justice. The Mirror of Justice. We know why she's a mirror, but why is she the Mirror of Justice? Why not the Mirror of Charity? Why not the Mirror of God? Why not the Mirror of the Glory of God? Why is she called by the Church the Mirror of Justice? Let's think about this. Why did the church choose this particular human virtue of justice with which to glorify our Blessed Lady? What is justice? St. Thomas teaches us that justice is the giving to others of what naturally belongs to them. The giving to others of what naturally belongs to them classic example that's used all the time in the books of moral theology, if I do a job of work and my employer gives me money for it, that's justice. I've earned that money, it belongs to me. When the employer gives me the money, is it charity? No, I've earned it. It's justice. Is he being very generous in reaching into his big pockets and giving me the money I've earned? No. It's justice. Justice is giving to others what naturally belongs to them. It is justice to be obedient to parents. Obedience is something that is owed to parents. Justice. It is justice to keep the legitimate laws of the land we live in. That's justice. We're not being charitable. It's justice. It is justice to give praise and glory to God. When we praise God, when we call him holy, when we highlight 
in our own mind and to our brothers and sisters and in the church to God himself, the beauty and the glory of God, are we being charitable? Are we being generous? We're practicing justice. Justice. To you all praise belongs, the psalm says to God. All praise is due to you in Zion, O God. When we praise God, we're giving him what he deserves. He deserves to be praised. It's his due. He, uh, he has earned that praise. Praising God is justice. And so when our Blessed Lady um, gives to God what belongs to God, she is the mirror of justice. Now, look at the world in which we live. It's very easy for us to say this, but when we talk about um, kind of violence, um, injustice that we see, the anger that's uh, ever-present and bubbling under the surface, people no longer give to each other what is their due. We live in an unjust society. We no longer give people the respect which is their due. We no longer give people the just wage which is their due. We no longer give to our parents the just obedience which is their due. In our society, we no longer give to innocent people the lives which are their due. It's called abortion. Abortion is a great crime and it's a great injustice because we are taking from the unborn child what belongs to them, which is their life, injustice. We no longer offer God what is his due. If it's God's due to be worshipped, where are people coming to Mass? They're no longer coming to worship God. They're not giving him what is his due. If it's God's due to be praised, and even people in the church don't know how to pray, we're not giving God what is his due. Inside the church, outside the church, there is injustice. Because God made us, we have the duty to live a good and moral life, to return to him the moral good, because it's his due. In these and in many, many other ways that we could spend all day listing, we live in an unjust society, because God is not given what is his due. A mirror reflects things. But a mirror also gives us what we cannot see. Classic example, in your car, you have a rear view mirror. Why? Because you can't see behind you. In your car, you have wing mirrors. Why? Because you can't see behind you. You'll have a mirror in your bedroom, in your bathroom, and just by your door. Why? Because you can't see your own face. And so, to make sure you're presentable to the world, you look in the mirror because we can't see our own face. The mirror shows us what we cannot see. The mirror shows us what other people see. What we cannot see in, our, in, in the world, what is hidden to us in the world, is God receiving his due. God give, uh, people giving justice to each other, people giving justice to God. But when we look at Our Lady, the mirror of justice, we see Our Lady giving God what is his due, giving her cousin Elizabeth what is her due, giving us in the church what is our due. Mary offers the hymn of praise to our Lord. My soul glorifies the Lord. If God's due, what, if God deserves to be praised, if praise belongs to God, then Our Lady says, my soul glorifies the Lord. 
She is the mirror of justice. A mirror shows us what is there. And a mirror shows us what is hidden from us. And so the more we gaze on our Blessed Lady, not just at the statue of Our Lady, but the more we gaze on her virtues, on her life, on the miracle that God allows her to work in the world, the more we gaze on the message which she's given us in all the motherly and kind apparitions that she's given us out of her generosity, the more we see what is lacking and missing from ourselves. What we need to do to return to God is to begin to give what God what is his due. And so, when we say mirror of justice to our Blessed Lady, when he, we call her by this beautiful and ancient title, mirror of justice, we're calling her by a name, a title, but we're also praying to her. We're making a prayer from the depth of our heart, from the depth of our society even. Mirror of justice. Mirror of justice, let me be, begin to see your virtues in myself. Mirror of justice, let me begin to reflect God also. Mirror of justice, purify me so that I may reflect God more and more purely. Mirror of justice, Pray for our world, which is full of injustice. Mirror of justice, help us to give God what belongs to him. Mirror of justice, help us to reflect for the world the beauty of holiness. Mary, mother of the church, mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, Mary, mirror of justice, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.